So our studio looks like this one. We have four windows. We have the, the script view, which is this part. We have the console. So the, um, this is where your output will show. And you have the variables environment. So this is the console. This is where your outputs will come. Also, they will be saved in the environment here. So here we can import data. When you create an object, it will also come here. Then when you have plots and other packages also come, you have help, choose. We have files here. We can change directory here. All of that, you can do them in this part. But if you need to have an easy access, you can come to these windows. So normally what you can do is you can close all of them can minimize them as well, depending on your preferences. So let's see. So I have typed these ones. I will type a few things. So if you look at the script, I have a comment here. See this hash sign is a comment. I'm only indicating to R as we saw earlier that this is not a code. So if I remove the comment in R, in RStudio, when you want to run a line, you can do a number of things. If you go to this um, button, say run the current line or selection. So if you select a line, you can run with this. So if I select this, I can run the line, or I just have to be on the line and I can run. Okay. So what's going to happen is that you can either come and do use this, or you can use a shortcut, which is Control Enter. Control Enter. So it depends on what you want. I usually prefer to use Control Enter instead of moving across the screen to to run. So if I use Control Enter, I'm going to get get an error because I have I removed the comments. This this is not a code. It's not supposed to be a code, though it's an error. So what I can do is I'll put the comment back. Then I'll run. If I run, if I run this line, I don't have any errors now because that is seen as a as a comment. Okay. So I can put a comment here and say run with control so, enter so that gives me i can put another comment and i say that the clear screen or console which you use you will do very often with so this will clear the screen for you whenever Whenever you, you need to clear your screen, you you will use the control L combination, which is very important because you don't want to have a lot of things on your workspace. Now, so what you realize as we go along with that, we are going to do some few operations here. Okay, so that should give us you can change it to any of the operations and you get the, the results. So we can go through that. So some arithmetic operations as you go along. So here you realize I'm using the a built-in function in R, which is which calculates the square root. And I'm using the semicolon to run these two lines at the same time. So if I run that, she gets them. The disadvantage is that if there are too many, then you have to match them as to which output corresponds to which code. And also use another function in R which is pi. So what we can do is we can compare if this is this and this are the same. So two two multiplied by say twenty two by seven that's pi right see if they are the same. There's some differences but it's just due to approximation. So what we may do if we want to get the same thing 
what we can do is to round them to say four decimal places or five decimal places. So we can say round, okay, another one. So we are rounding to say five decimal places. That should give us the same thing because of the approximation, just a moment. Not too many. Which is strange. Okay, anyway. So I think just arithmetic operations. If you can follow, you can be typing yours. Otherwise, I will share the scripts early. Okay, then we can do some exponents here as well. And the exponents can also be fractions. And obviously, we can also combine a number of notations together. So going on, I have too many things on my screen now, so I can click here or wherever I am. I can do Control L. That goes away because I don't have to. I don't want to have too many things on the screen on my workspace. We can do further rotations. If you look at this sign, the percentage sign in some other packages is is a comment. But in R, it's, it's a division sign in addition to the modulus. So if you want to find the modulus, we know what the modulus is. Um, so we will not go into that. We just want to do how they come out. So we expect the answer of this to be as one, two, depending on how we understand modulus. We can also do some basic trigonometry estimations. And the so cosine is cos, uh, tangent is tan, and sine is sine. And we can also look at the, the arc, sine, and the rest of them. Here you see that there's a warning. Now, whenever you have an output that gives you a warning, it typically does not mean that there's an error in the code. For example, this one is saying that the, not a number is produced. That is because of the, the output is not necessarily a mistake with the, with the code. So what you'll be worried about most of the time should be errors. Like, um, let's see, let me, let's make an error here. Just to get an error. So an error like object G not found, that we should be concerned about that instead of a warning. So let's change that back to. Okay. And then we can, of course, put combinations of that. Then we can look at the logarithms as well, which we we'll use most likely. So the log is just write log this is log we have not specified the base but if you look at the lin the natural logarithm log base 10 we have to indicate the base so here 10 here is the base and that should give us one accordingly and we can choose any base at all that will also give us the corresponding value <laughs> Going on, we sometimes we want to deal with only positive numbers. So let me see. We have say one minus three that gives us negative two. But if you take the absolute of the two, that should give us just the absolute without the negative. And one thing I need to point out is that so far we are working with the only base functions. We have not used any external function. Okay. 
let's look at some few things basic moments your mean mode standard deviation variance so what you see here let me pick this one out briefly what you see here we'll look at that very shortly is that i'm creating basically a vector of numbers so that i can look at the mean of that so that's what is done in that space so we know what the arithmetic mean is so this is a typical arithmetic mean and if we know so what we can do is attempt to find that one out and see if that's correct so we can also look at the median the mode doesn't work in this particular contest it needs a function which we don't want to go into the median also given the variance function is the var it's lower case here for example if i change it to upper case she have an error here saying could not find function var so again we need to be sure what the function is before we use it so the var the variance is 2.5 and standard deviation is SD. So we say that we know that the standard deviation is the square root of variance. So we may want to confirm that positive of 2.5. And that's, that's the same. I'll hold on with this one so far. So let's now look at the hypothetical situation where we had the data, where we had the, the example of, of some coach uh, summer school students. We collected their dates, their age, and their height. We want to enter that data. So for those of you who were who came not long ago, let me show you that I think is this one. First row, first column, based on the table here. 